April of 2023, the police in a small town in western India received a call about a disturbing discovery inside a tent on a farmer's property. Upon arriving at the scene, they found a patchwork tent propped up against a stone wall. Initially, the police thought it was a peculiar religious shrine, but upon closer inspection, they realized it was something much darker. Please note that the following story contains graphic content, so viewer discretion is advised. The actual picture of the tent. On the evening of April 15, 2023, a couple named Hansa and Himu Makwana, along with their two children, a 12-year-old son and a 14-year-old daughter, stood on the front doorstep of a little shack in a village called Vincha, Western India. They were excited because they were going to spend the night with their uncle and cousins who lived in a shack nearby. As the children ran inside, calling out for their relatives, Himu and Hansa exchanged pleasantries with their uncle, who assured them that everything would be fine. The couple thanked him and began walking back to their own home, appreciating the beauty of the village during the sunset. The village they lived in was a poor farming community, and while they usually dealt with the struggles of daily life, that night they focused on the peaceful ambience. The couple held hands, enjoying the sight of cows returning to their stables, their bells ringing as they walked. When a group of cows crossed their path, Himu and Hansa stepped back to avoid getting their clean clothes dirty. Unlike most days when they wore clothes covered in mud and dirt from their farming work, that night they were dressed in their finest outfits. Himu and Hansa, after the cows passed, Himu paused for a moment looking at Hansa, who appeared happy and radiant. They smiled at each other and continued walking hand in hand. They reached their home, a small concrete and brick structure, and instead of entering through the front door, they made their way to the back of the property where their crops grew. Walking through the fields of peanuts and cotton, they arrived at the back of their property, marked by a tall stone wall. Behind the wall was their tent, a patchwork structure they had built. One side of the tent leaned against the stone wall, while the other side was supported by wooden stakes driven into the ground. Inside the tent was their family's shrine to the Hindu god Shiva. Himu and Hansa had recently completed a new addition to the shrine and were eager to use it that night. They stood outside, admiring the sunset, before entering the tent one after the other. The following day, the couple's children returned from their uncle's house, where they had spent the night. They searched for their parents inside the house, but couldn't find them. The siblings then went to the back of the house and, suspecting their parents might be in the shrine, headed towards the stone wall. As they reached the shrine, they noticed that something was amiss. The shrine, which their parents typically kept absolutely immaculately clean at all times, looked kind of dirty. There was this weird rusty colored liquid all over everything, including some of the holy objects like the picture and statue of Shiva. In the middle of the shrine, there was a fire pit with two chunks of meat that seemed forgotten. The kids knew their parents would never leave the shrine in such a condition or let food sit out on a fire untouched. They wondered what had happened inside the shrine and where their parents were. Upon further inspection of the shrine, the children noticed something they had missed initially. What they saw made them scream and run away. This is the story behind what the children witnessed the night before when their parents, Himu and Hansa, entered the tent. As Himu and Hansa surveyed the shrine, they noticed a fire pit in the middle with a small egg-shaped statue of Shiba and a picture of Shiba placed beside it. Shiba, a powerful figure in the Hindu religion, symbolized both rebirth and destruction. His portrayal in the photo and statue showed him with smeared white skin from the ashes of corpses, crescent moons in his hair, and snakes and skulls around his neck. Himu and Hansa were about to perform a ritual. Shiba, despite the sweltering weather, the couple collected firewood and started a fire in the pit inside the tent. Hansa sprinkled orange flower petals around the statue in picture, while Himu wrote a note with trembling hands. They signed the note by pressing their thumbs in ink at the bottom, folded it, and placed it between the statue and the picture of Shiva. Their attention turned to a rectangular frame made of scrap metal, resembling a door frame without a door. It stood in front of the fire pit, with a white rope draped over the top. Himu and Hansa carefully positioned themselves on their bellies at the base of the structure. They said a prayer, and then Himu pulled on the rope until it was taut. With a final loving look at each other, they let go. The rusty colored liquid that the children discovered the next day inside the shrine was the blood of Himu and Hansa. The chunks of meat in the fire pit were their decapitated heads. The children saw their headless bodies lying next to the structure. 
Terrified, they ran outside to find a police. The structure Himu and Hansa had built was a homemade guillotine. The white rope Himu pulled was connected to a heavy metal blade. When released, the blade fell, decapitating the couple and sending their heads rolling into the fire as part of their ritual. When the police arrived at the shrine, they found the sign note, but it provided no explanation for the couple's actions. Himu and Hansa stated it was their choice, and they only asked their living family members to care for their children and elderly parents. The reason behind their intentional decapitation and burning of their heads remains a mystery. Some speculate that Himu and Hansa might have been performing a black magic ritual, hoping it would bring them closer to a higher power, such as Shiva. However, to this day, no one knows the true motive behind their tragic and perplexing act. In April of 20.